So we've talked now in detail about the roles of the different cells and what they are doing within the immune response. Um, but I do think it's really easy to think of it in a bit of a different way. We're go now going to talk about the story of the immune response. So um, here we are, we're starting off with our country, the body. It's got lots of defences already. It's got ports, it's making sure no one's coming in who shouldn't be. Defences that the body have got to prevent any infections from entering. Now, unfortunately, things invade. And here are our vicious army there on the right waiting to invade. They've got inside um, onto the streets of the country and are ready to attack. Now, we know that they're the enemy. Uh, they have a different uniform to the hosts, to the inhabitants of the country. And so we're able to easily identify them as being foreign. Phagocytes are our patrol team that drive around um, on the roads, making sure no one unwanted is getting in. And they immediately recognise that this uniform isn't the uniform that should be there. And so they engulf them and destroy them in their little clean-up trucks. However, in an infection, the enemy are too strong. There are too many of them for the phagocytes to clear up. So the fighting begins. Uh, the pathogens get inside the houses, the host cells, and they start attacking the cells. They try and take it over. And the cells put up a good fight. The inhabitants try and fight back, but it's not always a success. During the fight, there are some injuries. And what the inhabitants do is they display these limbs, the, the parts that have been torn off, the antigens, on the surface of their house, the, on the surface of the body cells, just for everyone to be aware of what's happened there. They've been affected, they've been attacked. It also marks it for destruction. They know they've lost, they know they need to be destroyed to prevent infection from spreading further. But it helps out the others. It shows off what they look like to any others who might be under attack to help uh, the immune system to help the war uh, be fought. So these limbs, the antigens, are detected and the distress signal is sent out to recruit the army. And the first members to come along are our macrophages, our cleanup trucks, and they work by picking up any of the pathogens that are displaying these features, these limbs, engulfing them, taking them in, destroying them, and displaying part of them on the surface of the truck to help others be aware of what they look like. The dump trucks, the macrophages, will then send for more help. So they send their little messenger, the cytokines, for more help. And eventually the message will arrive at T-cell headquarters in the thymus, of course. Here they select which ones are the correct T-cells, the ones that have the correct uniform on to fight off the pathogens. And they send out their ruthless soldiers, the killer cells, to destroy any of the houses that have been infected. So the killers know to go straight for the houses that have got the limbs displayed on the surface of them so they can destroy them. The T cells also have recruiters there and they, their job is to send more messages out. They send more pigeons out to recruit the B cells and to get more phagocytes, more clean-up trucks to the site of the action on the street to clear up any unwanted pathogens that are there. We've also got the librarians at the T-cell headquarters, which are the team memory cells, and they have a really important jo job of storing. They record the information and store it just in case something like this were to happen again. So these messages have now been sent uh, flying across to the B-cell headquarters in the bone marrow, and the message arrives, and they get the message to start being selected to start differentiating. The scientists, first of all, the plasma cells, will use samples of the limbs, the antigens, to come up with a formula for a weapon that is going to fight off the pathogens. So they create antibodies using the antigens that have been presented by the other cells. This weapon will then act in a couple of different ways. The weapon can clump together the horrible pathogens, sticks them all together so that the cleanup trucks can do their job a bit easier, um, or it can actually destroy them by breaking down their skin. The B cell librarians, similar job to the T cell librarians, they are recording exactly what formula was used to generate the weapon 
And if anything happens again, they will, of course, go back to their records and produce the weapon a lot quicker the next time. So that's it. The war has been won. Enough antibodies have been produced. Enough weapons have been produced. The phagocytes, all of the cleanup trucks have done their jobs to remove the pathogen from the streets of the country. However, the next time this happens, it will be a much speedier war. The librarians, the B cell and the T cell memory cells have access to all of the information that they've already got and are able to create these weapons, the antibodies, much faster, reducing the overall civilian death the number of body cells that are damaged in this war. So I hope that has explained the immune response in a slightly different way and perhaps it will help you remember the different jobs of the immune cells.